Hi, I'm Lulu Baker, and I'm here with Phil from the Aquarium of the Pacific. And so tell us a little bit about what you do. Uh, my name is Phil Conley. I'm an education specialist here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Uh, I am one of the educators that teaches family programs, school programs. I do tours and presentations, uh, just general uh, education to the public. Okay, Phil. Um, the purpose of my video is to help leatherback sea turtles who are an endangered species. Um, you've been around sea turtles here at the aquarium, so can you tell us a little bit like what they're like and what their personalities are like? Sure, we have uh, olive ridleys here and all sea turtles are endangered. Um, ours are much smaller than uh, the leatherbacks that you're doing your, your report on. Um, but sea turtles in general have very small brains, they're not very social animals, and therefore they're not uh, really that exciting with their behaviors. They kind of just are, are very chill and uh, hang out all day. They eat and swim about and that's about it. So, yeah. Um, can you tell us uh, how and when the leatherback sea turtle became endangered? Sure. So they were listed on the endangered species list in 1970, as you probably already know. Uh, many reasons uh, common to all sea turtles uh, becoming endangered. Uh, number one, habitat loss or destruction. Two, uh, poaching or harvesting their eggs. Um, number three, uh, fishing gear that they get entangled with uh, and things like that. So main, main things is that in the past 30 years or so, their populations have declined by up to 90% in, in certain areas. All right, and um, what is being done to save the sea turtles now that you know of? Um, just recently, the National Marine Fisheries Service uh, has protected over 40,000 square miles off our coast, and that is cri what they have termed critical habitat. Uh, this is the place where they migrate to feed on the jellies, and so they're out there feeding off of the coast of California, Oregon, and Washington. <coughs> and so we have quite a bit of uh, area of the ocean set aside for that where they're not allowed to be, to be, uh, I don't know, caught or harassed in any way. So that's good. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't protect them after they get out past that into the fisheries where long lines and gill nets can ensnare them or they can get trapped. Uh, in certain areas, sea turtles get caught in shrimp catching nets. We have, they have what you call trawl nets. So basically, it's like a big basket they drag through uh, the ocean. It's cone shaped and all of the smaller animals get shoved down into the bottom of it. And if a turtle happens to swim through and get caught in there, um, they drown because they have to breathe air and they can't come up. Um, so they've started in including these turtle excluder devices, which are kind of like a little trap door that opens up on the edge of the net and the turtle or the larger animal can push it up. The smaller animals can't, so they still go in the net and that lets the larger animals escape. So that's another great thing. And finally, there's lots of rescue uh, operations around the world going on, trying to preserve ha their habitat and keep them from being hunted by people, basically, mainly because of their eggs. The eggs are considered a delicacy in many, many countries. What efforts do you feel that are being done that are most effective? I think uh, what's most effective is a strategy that includes all protection. Uh, so not only protecting their nesting habitat, but also protecting their migratory routes, where they eat, uh, where they breed. So you can't just protect one and say, we've got, got that covered. It has to be all areas. And unfortunately, we haven't come up with a good strategy across multiple nations that protects all turtles. So we're working towards it, and there's a lot of people that are out there trying to fight for the sea turtles, but fortunately, uh, unfortunately, a lot more work needs to be done. Okay, and what can we do as kids to help save the leatherback sea turtle? Uh, the most important thing is to get educated. Just uh, get informed about what the issues are, what things are really helping sea turtles, and what things aren't as effective. It's not enough just to uh, pick up your trash, you know, we're aware that sea turtles can eat trash and that's bad for them, but 
you can't just say, oh, well, I pick up my trash, so I'm saving the sea turtles. You have to, to know all of the issues that are out there, you know, from fishing, from pollution, from, you know, overconsumption of certain fish or uh, things that they rely on for their food sources. We have to think about all the decisions that we make and just continually do that throughout our lives. So not just doing one thing and making yourself feel good about it, but continuing to stay educated and continuing to be active. Um, you can write your local assemblywoman. I uh, think her name's Julia Brownlee if for Venice. Um, and you can let her know uh, your feelings about the subject. You can write letters. You can uh, get involved online. There's a great site called Oceana.org, and you can look up uh, some of the activities that they have. So doing beach cleanups, doing neighborhood cleanups, just letting people know and being a good advocate for the turtles. All right. Thank you very much, Phil. Thank you. It was a great interview.